Hello, I'm at Thought Slime and I'm addicted to Twitter. Hi, I have Thought, Thought Slime. Slime. Started using when I was 25. At first it was simple stuff, just random jokes, observations, funny pictures, cats mostly. But eventually I got into the harder stuff like politics, tweet threads, drama. Got to a point where I was making Twitter memes in real life. Talking to anybody who would listen about the main character of the day. Some of them weren't even permanently online. I explained why Bean Dad was a milkshake duck to my wife. She didn't even know what a milkshake duck was. That was my rock bottom. I tried to insist that it wasn't my rock bottom, but I slowly started to shrink and transform into a corn cob. I'm only being half facetious, by the way. I'm definitely addicted to Twitter, in the truest sense of the word. Checking Twitter is a compulsive behavior that I can't seem to stop, even though it demonstrably makes my life worse and affects my relationships with my IRL loved ones. It makes me angry, bitter, wastes my time, and gives me unlimited access to the vitriol of literally thousands of strangers every single day. I've tried to quit. I've deleted the app from my phone only to find myself opening it up in the mobile browser. I've installed Chrome extensions to limit my time on the site only to open the site again in an incognito window so that the extensions won't run. More than once I've posted literal post-it notes on my computer screen reminding me not to check Twitter. I've tried to create a Pavlovian response where every time I got into a pointless argument with some rando, I would eat an olive. And I hate olives, so the idea is I would train myself not to argue with people, and none of it worked. Inevitably, I end up back on the Bird website, getting mad about some stranger I'll never meet, saying deliberately provocative bullshit like, Marshmallow peeps are conditioning people to be more okay with eating baby chickens, or why white people don't get to make jokes about zodiac signs. Twitter is a space designed and maintained to remove people's chill, to get everyone involved in long, pointless discourse that they will mistake for activism. It's not. It's entertainment. It might be fun to tweet at Coke and ask them when they're going to introduce a can with a flared base so you can shove it up your butthole, and obviously, obviously, I highly encourage you to do that. But come on, everybody. It's just a joke. Twitter's designed almost perfectly to get people into arguments and keep those arguments going forever. The 280 character limit itself, an expanded version of the original 140 character limit, means you can never really explain your ideas with any level of nuance. You can say something short and quippy, but anything that requires a counterintuitive explanation is impossible to talk about on Twitter. Sure, you can make multiple tweets in a thread, but Twitter might not show the whole thread to your followers. It might only show one tweet in the whole list of them, usually the first. And if any one tweet can be taken out of context, God help you if the first tweet can be taken out of context, it will be by someone. It doesn't matter how much you clarify your statement, people will continue to see the first tweet and react to it without reading any further clarifying statements. You can see this whenever someone makes a tweet that could be interpreted to be about someone else. Like someone tweets, I hate it when guys on YouTube talk about eyeballs. Then someone's like, Who's this about? Who are you talking about? Was, who is... Who are you vague tweeting right now? Who's this about? And the OP will be like, I, I don't know. Just nobody, really. Nobody just... I, I don't like it in general. Only for them to get the same question over and over and over. And then OP replies to their own tweet and says, Guys, this isn't about anyone. I just don't like it, okay? I'm not, I'm not subtweeting anybody. And then the replies to that are like, Hey, at Dot Slime, this person says they don't like you. Hey, at Dot Slime, did you know that? Did you know that they tweeted something bad about you? And then people who like me are in their face going, Hey, fuck you, pal. What do you got against Thought Slime? And now, not only do they have to deal with it all day, but so do I. And let me just state for the record, I don't need anybody to defend me on Twitter. Let people criticize me. Let people not enjoy things. A little while ago, Twitter made a change to the site that they had to roll back because everybody fucking hated it. When making a retweet, the website defaulted to a quote tweet incentivizing people to add their own thoughts to a retweet. And that sounds innocuous, right? Just a little way to get people talking. But if you agree with a tweet and think your followers will like it, you're a lot less likely to quote tweet than retweet. Because if the tweet is fine as it is, if you don't have a problem with it, it makes sense to just throw it on your timeline unchanged. But if you don't like it, if you think the tweet is very bad, you'd quote tweet with some sort of 
witty rejoinder. By incentivizing the latter, you're essentially saying, hey everybody, let's get into it. Let's get into the real shit. And I think this is a glimpse into where Twitter's priorities lie. Like all social media sites, this one included, YouTube, their goal is to increase in their goal is to increase engagement. They want to keep people on Twitter and keep them actively increasing all their metrics that they can then use to demonstrate value to advertisers. Every unpopular choice they make is for this reason. You know how they show you tweets from people you don't follow? Just random tweets from people you follow that may have liked those tweets or maybe just random tweets that, they, that their algorithm has decided this seems like a tweet you'd like. There's already a feature for people to share tweets they like. I don't, I don't need Twitter to do that for me. I can find plenty of accounts to follow, but they want you to follow as many people as you can so there's a constantly updating stream of content for you to just endlessly consume. There's a big panel on the main page urging you to follow more people. All of this is to keep you hooked, to keep you sitting there endlessly scrolling. In fact, you ever really thought about that? Like the infinite scroll is a design choice and one that presents, or I guess more realistically, once presented but now it doesn't really, a lot of hurdles for web developers. It used to be that whatever was rendered on an HTML file was just rendered and then stayed that way until you requested something else and then they would, you'd go to a different page and it would render a new thing with different stuff on it. There were ways around that, sure, you could have like flash on your website or whatever, but that came with its own set of problems. Even. The default way to solve this problem for decades was just to have a list of pages. You finish a page and then you click next page and get more content. That's still how it works on a lot of sites like Amazon or Google, for example, but not on social media sites, not on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, Pinterest, etc. In all of those, you can keep scrolling and the site will keep loading content forever, baby. There is no end. Unless I guess you scrolled like all the way back to the beginning of the website. But I'm assuming that even if you did that, they would just like start sprinkling in old content again and repeat it forever. Why? Why are they all designed that way? It seems like a pretty arbitrary choice. I mean, sure, it makes the browsing experience a little bit easier, but it's not like that's a huge focus for these sites. Just look at what Facebook looks like. And it means that you have to load a bunch of content that's going to place a big strain on servers just constantly updating people's feeds like that. Like, you could just make it pages. But it's a little addictive, isn't it? Like, the same way that a loot box in a video game is. You don't know what the next thing is going to be, so you just scroll and scroll and scroll and there's nothing to tell you to stop. Or maybe when you scrolled a bit too far and you feel like you've run out of content, you can pull down the screen with your thumb and then that will make it refresh. Does that motion pulling something down and then getting random stuff remind you of anything? And you gotta take my word for none of this. Listen to the inventor of Infinite Scroll explain it in a way that's needlessly and disgustingly fat phobic. And so the thought was, why don't we just take the content that's on this second page the user is already scrolling. Scrolling already means show me more. So we just load an extra content and place it beneath and place it beneath and place it beneath. The user is not realizing that by removing the stopping cue uh, from the human, just like when you have a soup bowl and you slowly feed in more soup, people eat way more food and contributes to obesity, that this is going to directly contribute hundreds of millions of hours of wasted time to the obesity of our minds. He's right about the addicting nature of the infinite scroll, but I feel the need to point out very, very wrong about the root causes of the obesity crisis, which I'll probably have to make a video about next because I started writing a little aside about it and very quickly that got out of hand, but suffice to say, it's not because individual people lack the self-control to stop eating soup. Personally, I find that kind of manipulation despicable. Just toying with people for what? For engagement? For money? Where do you get off, you despicable? Oh, hey, Grumble Tom. This is Grumble Tom, everybody. The lovable woodland critter who can only eat my likes, comments, subscriptions, and Patreon pledges. His favorite food is Patreon pledges. Whoa, buddy, you're not looking too good. You might want to lie down for a little bit. What was I saying? The infinite scroll isn't the only way that Twitter and most other social media networks are designed to be addicting. Consider the like button. 
a near universal feature on every social media platform. Please hit mine now. The like button keeps us checking in on the things we make, subtly gamifying our need for social validation, or, you know, in my case, creating a financial incentive because the more people like the video, the more it gets shared, and then, then I get more money. Social media companies have entire teams of software developers and designers whose specific job is to keep our focus by any means necessary. This isn't just some wackadoo conspiracy theory. It's just how they operate, because of course that's how they operate. The more people on their website, and for longer, the more valuable the site is to advertisers and data harvesters. Imagine how useful it is to know what people pay attention to and why. Imagine the ways that knowledge could be used to make you pay attention to whatever they want. Not just to sell you stuff, neither. To get you to vote a certain way. To manufacture consent for unpopular policies or wars. To wit, the IDF occasionally advertises on my videos, even though they shouldn't be able to with my AdSense settings. Likewise, PragerU, and plenty of other ghouls. Take that as a compliment, that some algorithm somewhere decided that people who watch my videos, people like you, are at risk of having dangerous, subversive ideas. Like maybe, ethnic cleansing is bad. Twitter also curates your feed based on what it knows you're likely to pay attention to. And one of the ways that you train it to know what you pay attention to is when you reply to something, or you quote it, or you talk about it. And let's face it, we're all more likely to respond when we're mad or disagree with something. I see you, jackals. If I make a video about Ben Shapiro, you're all for it. You can't trick me. I got the data. I can measure it. My most popular video is about the fucking Turner Diaries. Fess up. We're all messy bitches. Don't believe me? Check the comments on this video for all the people complaining that I said I don't like olives. I don't. Live with it. I, I thought it was common sense that people like different foods than one another, but if you say you like pineapple on pizza, suddenly the dipshit brigade is out in full force. I like Guinness, but I understand that to a significant portion of the population, it tastes like the juice at the bottom of a recycling bin. You don't hear me whining about it, it's people like different foods, and fucking live with what? Why are y'all so weird about this? My point is, your feed ends up almost exclusively full of things that make you pissed off. And what's worse, your tolerance for things which piss you off gradually diminishes. You end up in a shrinking and shrinking echo chamber of people who validate your every belief, able to mute and block anyone whose takes you don't like. Not only are you angry all the time, but more and more things start to make you angry. And this is on all sides of the political spectrum, by the way. From right-wingers who are bizarrely angry about people putting pronouns in their bios, as though that could in any way hurt anyone whatsoever, to the performative hypersensitive allyship of libs and lefties. Some of you, no doubt, will interpret what I just said to mean that I don't think people should be allies with marginalized people, thereby proving my point. Cancel culture is a made-up idea, but the hysteria around it is founded on a very real fear that is manipulated by bad actors. The fear of online harassment, which is a growing problem. Nobody can be made to shut up or go away because people don't like them on the internet. I certainly can't. Plenty of people have tried to shut me up or make me go away, and it'll never happen. I'm with you forever. It's a prison of your own design. But, and this is crucial, Plenty of people get harassed and bullied for not being liked on the internet, whether or not they deserve to be disliked. And folks, let me tell you, let me tell you, Twitter is unusable if you have over 10k followers. It is a self-esteem destroying machine which consumes time and excretes frustration. Every time I go into my DMs folder, it's full of people providing itemized lists of everything they agree and disagree with me about, as though I could possibly care. Why would I care about that? I, 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 I don't need people to send me nice messages to balance it out. That won't help, okay? I If I get 400 comments saying, wow, good video, dude, love your video, nice job on the video, and one saying, hey, this video stinks and I don't like your t-shirt, I will ruminate on the latter all day. When I wrote the script, I assumed I would be wearing a t-shirt, but I, I changed into a, a, a button down for the skit in the beginning. Yeah, I just thought you wouldn't wear a t-shirt to a... Make no mistake, the overwhelming majority of feedback I, or any big account, gets is positive. People are far too effusive, if anything, just the nicest, sweetest people. 
And after a while, that just becomes background noise. But then if one person out of a thousand is a shithead, that stands out. You can't drown them out because it's the rareness of it that makes it so remarkable in the first place. Like people will say the most venomous shit to you, just wildly angry for no reason. And there's plenty of legit criticism too. I don't really like getting that either, but at least it's good for me. I'm not talking about legitimate criticism. They're, that's fine. I'm talking about weirdos who are like, whoa, this guy looks like he fucks bagels and then eats them. And I certainly can't respond to those people. I can't be like, no, I don't eat them. Because the moment I bring any attention to it, suddenly my 70,000 followers get their hackles up and go harass them right back way worse. And it's this never ending cycle of harassment. I made a tweet like a year or so ago, reacting to a thing at the time where right wingers were getting weirdly anti-porn and masturbation for some reason, the joke of which was meant to be, oh, it's nice not to have to worry about it and jerk off whenever you want. That's what's cool about being on the left. And every few weeks, some dumpster brain will trot it out and act like it's some sort of endorsement of the way sex workers are treated in the pornography industry, despite the dozens of times I've had to explain it by now. And I admit it. This tweet is cringy as hell. I am very embarrassed by it in hindsight. And that's the worst thing you can be on Twitter. Embarrassing. The greatest sin you can commit, worse than all of the genuinely abusive creeps on the platform, are people, like me, who don't always have the best social skills. Because Twitter is a bullying engine. It's a website to log on to and bully strangers for fun. And if you make yourselves an easy target, and I'll admit, I very much do sometimes, there's blood in the water. But here's the other part of all of this, right? I am not innocent of any of this. I, I do the exact same shit. I can complain about people being mean to me all I want, but the fact of the matter remains that I do the same thing. Every day I log onto Twitter and I get negative, short-tempered, and belligerent with strangers. I tear down people for kicks or enjoy watching other people tear down people for kicks and then justify it to myself by saying that those people deserved it. But even if they do, I'm not making the world any better by ruining some asshole's day. I'm just adding to the sum total of misery in the world. That's not a good thing. I shouldn't be doing that. So I, I just, I gotta stop. I'm not gonna deactivate my account because I wanna be able to post promotional stuff and about videos and shit, but I can't stay on this terrible website. Twitter is making me miserable and mean, and there's probably a social network doing that to you too. Maybe it's Twitter, maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's YouTube. Quite frankly, YouTube is the worst for it because every YouTuber will look you right in the eye and beg you to engage with them more. Just exploiting a parasocial relationship like you owe them a goddamn thing for making video. Haha, <laughs> -ha, it's me, Matthew Slime. I'm just kidding. Now let's get to the I Zone. Welcome to the I Zone, where we help small creators get engagement on their brands. It, uh oh, it's scary. Today's brand is Harm Reduction Man who does videos about drug safety and busts drug myths. And hey, I love to talk about drugs, but maybe that type of thing is not your bag, baby. Well, this video is also about how police lie to entrap people and justify overreaching in the so-called war on drugs. In No, Cops Aren't Overdosing on Fentanyl Just By Touching It, it's, um, well, I mean, it's what the title says. That's what it's about. Watch it to completely and hopelessly fuck up your YouTube recommendations. Do you have a small project you'd like to see here in the iZone? Submit an email to thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com with the word eyeballs somewhere in the description box and pertinent details like your pronouns, please. <laughs> Another fun video. For real though, please, please subscribe to this channel and press the like button and, and, and ring the bell. Um, I, I have another channel. It's it's called Scaredy Cats, where I talk about horror movies over at Scaredy Cats TV. I put out new videos every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I stream, I stream Thursday at 8 p.m. on YouTube and Twitch. And, and also give me money on Patreon. What? Hey, I, what, what did you watch some more of my videos? Maybe recommend them to a friend, who so, someone who likes videos. Comment below your favorite social media site and all the fun memories you have there.